Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to another Technical Tuesday episode. Today, I want to talk to you about self-steer versus electronic autopilots, why we have both, what the advantages of both are, what the disadvantages of both are, and hopefully it will help you decide whether or not you need one, both, as you go off sailing. So let's start with the self-steer. As you can see behind me, we have a Hydrovein. It is just one of several different types of self-steer you can buy. The main reason we bought a Hydrovein is because you can offset it. A lot of self-steers need to be put in the very center line of the boat. Hydrovein doesn't, so our choices were limited by having this gate here. Self-steering works on a fairly basic principle. There is a big vein, and you set that vein to a certain wind angle, and the vein is connected to a rudder, which is in the water, and essentially, the boat will steer to a certain wind angle. We've sailed with a Hydrovein now for about 10,000 nautical miles, and what I would say is it works supremely well. The effectiveness of it is slightly different at different points of sail, but essentially we love it, won't fault it, and we'll never sail offshore without one. Saying that, there are certain limitations to it. It is not as convenient and easy as a conventional electronic autopilot. There is a control here, there's a control line, and you adjust that line to change the angle that the vane is set to the wind, and that will allow you to kind of change the, the actual course that the boat is going on. So the advantages of it are that if you set and you've trimmed your sails properly to a certain wind angle, the boat will follow the wind angle, so your sails are always set perfectly for the wind angle that you're at. Because you get wind shifts, um, as you sail across any distance. If you're using an electronic autopilot, which is set to a heading hold, your sail trim will just kind of fall out of whack as your, um, as your sail angle changes. So it's really kind of good for getting the most out of your sails. And from that point of view, you get more efficient sailing. So if the wind steer works on the simple principle of using the wind to steer the boat in a certain direction, an electronic autopilot, is a, it's fairly obvious what that does, but there's a lot of jiggery-pokery on that. It's not a simple device. There is the head unit which controls the uh, how the autopilot works. There is a flux gate compass which works out where it's meant to steer. There's a computer. There's all the wiring that goes with it, not to mention the motor which actually will drive uh, and turn the rudder as well as a plotter which in many cases is linked to this. The electronic autopilot is for us invaluable for coastal cruising. It is monkey proof. You push a button, it goes in a certain direction. You can change the angle, you push a button, I want, it to, I want the boat to go here. Push a button, it does that for you. You can also, with our autopilot, as you can with just about any autopilot, if it's linked to your plotter, you can put a position on your plotter and say, can you take the boat here? And it will do so. Garmin, as I suppose Raymarine and Furuno and B&G all also have integrated systems where it's theoretically meant to take you safely away from navigational hazards, away from certain depths, and it calculates a route for you. So it is really simple, although our autopilot is suicidal, and despite the fact that it's meant to have a facility for kind of avoiding certain objects, it seems to me that it always veers towards things that it wants us to hit. So the electronic autopilot is brilliant if you just want a push button operation where you push a button and you go to a certain direction. The autopilot will also uh, act as in a wind hold mode, so it will steer to a certain wind angle, although we don't often use that as much. So electronic autopilots, the advantage are, number one, they're really simple to use. You just push a button and it works. Secondly, uh, there's no real skill set involved in the kind of everyday operation of them and as I said they are absolutely invaluable for coastal cruising I want to go from A to B and I want to get there simply without messing around I don't want to have to kind of like adjust the wind angle so we're very very happy with having an electronic autopilot and importantly I would never be on a boat without one there are disadvantages to an electronic auto autopilot though, and the first thing is, well, for, if you need to install one, th the installation is not particularly easy. The compass has to be installed in a particular area of the boat which is free of magnetic interference. The motor has to be installed in a certain place, and that brings me on to the biggest problem we have with our autopilot is its noise. We have a direct drive motor, and a lot of autopilots are hydraulic motors, but 
the position of our electronic autopilot motor means that it's actually there's a lot of noise transmission into our aft cabin so you can hear it and if you are on a long passage and you're trying to sleep it can be quite kind of disturbing to hear the autopilot moving back and forth so that's the first thing the second thing um, is to do with power consumption when we are on long passages when we are moving you know when we're doing multiple days offshore you know we've just completed 29 days offshore we are very very aware of how much power we're consuming um, and the autopilot will use between probably four and eight amps depending on the sea state and um, you know how rough it is how much swell we've got and the position of you know how much work the autopilot has to do so you need to be aware that they are quite power hungry um, bigger boats with a 40 foot boat but bigger boats will have a bigger power requirement so you really need to budget that into into what you're using and the third thing which is a real bugbear for us because if you watch a lot of our videos you'll see that we kind of always have safeguards built into what we do we always try and build redundancy uh, and have backups for any system we have on the boat the biggest problem I have with our electronic autopilot is that it's subject and prone to failure. They all are. Certain bits will go, and we've already blown our autopilot up once. They are electronic components, and thus they're flawed. You know, they're in a marine environment. Ours packed up in the middle of the Bay of Biscay. We blew the clutch on it because it was just working too hard. Some of that was to do with the fact that we hadn't set it to kind of its most economical setting and it was trying too hard to keep up with the course we'd set for it. But a real flaw in electronic autopilots is that if you're offshore and your electronics pack up, you are hand steering. And we know not even several, so many boats that have had their electronic, electronic autopilots pack up or break at a time which was ridiculously inconvenient for them. So Therese and I, as you know, a lot of the time, most of the time in fact, we sail shorthanded or with a, a small crew. So over long pastures, you don't want to be hand steering. We know hundreds of boats that also kind of turn up mob handed with eight, eight or nine, you know, big burly men and they, they want to hand steer. So, but for, for the smaller crews, Electronic autopilot, it is flawed and if you find that you've broken a part of it um, and you don't have a spare, then you're, you're down to hand steering, which can be difficult after a period of time. So be aware, um, for us personally, if we only had an electronic autopilot on board and didn't have a self-steer unit, we would probably carry spares, of, well, at least a, a motor spare and probably a computer spare if we were going somewhere like the Pacific where it's, you know, you've got long passages and not a lot of scope to replace broken parts if you were to find them. So electronic autopilot, fantastic, invaluable on just about every cruising yacht from these kind of big multiple part systems that we have to the little kind of tiller mates that are essentially all in one unit for kind of attaching to a tiller. Absolutely fantastic. Definitely recommend one if you're doing just day sailing or even kind of a couple of days offshore. Moving on to the self steer. It is it, it, it looks to a lot of people like black art and we get a lot of questions on kind of Facebook and our social media saying how does that self steer work is it any good yes it is fantastic in a nutshell it works as I've discussed by just you set the vane to um, the direction or angle of the wind and the boat will steer in that in in the direction that you want it to so you just adjust it the, the vane there are other controls on the self steer to adjust its sensitivity, to adjust the kind of angle that the vane is at, which will kind of like depend on the wind strength. And from that point of view, it is almost infinitely kind of customizable and adjustable to get the best out of, um, out of the unit. There are a couple of downsides to it. The first thing is that if we're going upwind, we have so much um, kind of canvas with cockpit tents and bimini's and just the general kind of wind disturbance that flows across the cockpit it's not as accurate sailing upwind downwind where the wind is coming abaft of the beam or behind you it is amazing we set ourselves steer i think when we left las palmas in 2015 and just left it alone for about three weeks it, it took us 3,000 miles and essentially it was our it was our fifth crew member you know the, the, the four crew that we had on board we just, you know, were able to not hand steer. Um, and from that point of view, it is really, really valuable. Second thing is it uses no power. So if 
you're doing a long offshore passage and you're running a generator or you're using renewables like we do, you haven't got to worry about it consuming any power. Number three, it is completely silent. It doesn't make any noise. So from that point of view, you know, you haven't got to worry about noise, it just works. Number four, the windier it gets, the better it works. So unlike conventional autopilots, the electronic ones, where you kind of like the, the windier it gets, the more the motor has to work because the swell is up. This thing just works. In addition to that, it works. This particular unit has works as an emergency rudder. So the rudder that we have on our hydrovane, if we were to lose a rudder through, uh, you know, either um, through kind of um, hitting a dolphin, hitting a whale, hitting a rock or something, we have an emergency rudder there. So that's amazing. So in conclusion, um, both units have their own separate uses. There is an overlap between the use of both of them. I would suggest that if you are just doing coastal sailing, then an electronic autopilot is fine. If you are sailing offshore and have a big crew who want to hand steer, then an electronic autopilot is going to be fine. The self steer, it is limited. There's only a certain size of boat that you, that, that you can use it up to. I think probably by the time you get to 50 foot, I'm not sure they're as useful. And I don't, I haven't seen that many units on, on um, 50 foot and above boats. However, self steer units are absolutely invaluable for offshore sailing for long distances where you are shorthanded and are kind of very aware of your power requirements. Although, be aware that it is as much art as science in getting them to kind of work to a certain course. We have to offset our rudders um, very, very slightly to compensate for the fact that this is offset to port. But I would never travel offshore without self-steer. So that is kind of where we are with it. I hope that explains a little bit about how the self-steer works. And if you've enjoyed this, please, please, please leave a comment down below. Give us a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. Our social media is all down there and hit the notification bell because we will be putting out more videos like this as well as our weekly travel videos. So enjoy and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.